Okay, example 1410. We have a ram R. Okay, it's just a it's just a mass piece, uh, a mass of 100 kilograms. Released from rest, 0.75 meters up from the top spring A. Okay, so we've got two springs. I want you to take note here. We've got two springs A. Uh, it has a spring stiffness of 12 kilonewton per meter, and we've got B, which is nested. It's inside. Can you see that? And the height of A is 0.4, and the height of spring B is 0.3. So there's a difference in height of 100 millimeters, 0.1 meter. Okay? And this ram is 0.75 above the height, the top of A. Okay, so the idea is that we want to drop this uh, ram, and it's going to fall onto the springs and compress them. Okay, we assume it compresses both of them. Okay? And we want to find... What is the distance that it has compressed A? How far, when this thing comes to rest again, how far will it compress A? So determine the maximum displacement of A needed to stop the downward motion of the ram. Alright, so now again, like I always do, what are the forces that are involved in this problem? Well, we've got weight here and we're going to have spring forces. There's weight and we're going to have spring forces. Both of these are conservative forces, so we can make use of, of our conservation of mechanical energy. All right? So, they chose the datum through there for, to calculate the potential energy due to gravity. So, the kinetic energy at state 1 is 0. Okay? The potential energy at state 1 is 0. Why is it 0? Because the mass is is at the datum so potential energy due to gravity is zero and the springs are unstretched and uncompressed so there's no potential energy in the springs so we have zero and we have zero no potential energy then there's a better picture this is state one then the ram falls down and compresses we assume both of these springs at state 2. Compresses both of the springs. Now, we need to first look at the, the kinetic energy at state 2 of the ram, and we know that that would be zero because it's come to a rest, come to a halt. Okay? Then, in V2, remember we've got Vg and Ve, the potential energy due to gravity, potential energy to the spring. So, here's gravity here, if that was our datum, then we know that the, the potential energy due to gravity we know is given by Wy, and if it's below the datum, then it's negative weight times the change in its position from the datum. So we know that its final position is this entire thing, which is 0.75 plus Sa, because it's going to move all the way down there, okay? So that's where we get W, and there's the, the final position in relation to the datum. And we know that it's negative because it's below the datum. So there's our VG at state 2. Now we've got two springs. So what is the potential energy stored in spring A at state 2? It's simply going to be half KA SA squared because SA is the amount that spring A has been compressed but spring 2 is slightly different it is half KB SB squared it is the amount that that a spring B has been compressed but the amount that B will be compressed is always uh, 0.1 or 100 millimeters less than SA because SA will be compressed 100 millimeters and then only will B start to be compressed. So the total amount that A is compressed will always be um, 100 millimeters more or 0.1 meters more. So this is SB over here, which is SA minus 0.1 and our total thing needs to be squared. All right. And then you get this lovely equation. Then you solve for SA and we get two roots. Two roots. SA is... 0.331 and SA is minus 0.148.
And of course, we have to choose this one for SA because it's not possible for SA to move upwards. It's only possible for it to move down. So down is positive. Okay? Then SB, we know, is SA minus 0.1. So SB is SA, there's SA minus 0.1, which is 0.231. All right. I think that's good enough for this one. Cheers.